Guys, I saw Zack Snyder's Rebel Moon. Are the critics being fair? Yes, I'm Andy Signor, welcome to Movie World Plus. And yes, I do believe the critics are being fair. And I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, Andy, you went in biased. You went in to hate this movie regardless. I don't know what to tell you. I didn't. In fact, I liked the beginning a little bit. Uh, there were a few moments where I wasn't entirely bored. Visually, there's some cool stuff. But the problem is this movie is a movie we've seen before a million times. It's The Magnificent Seven. It's Seven Samurai in space. Uh, it just It's a village is needing help because the big bad guys are going to take it over. She must rally a group, a magnificent seven, if you will, literally seven of them on the poster to rally back. So she must uh, jockey through space to find these people. And what's frustrating is it's very predictable. And worse than that, all these, there's so many characters that it's really hard to sort of get invested in any of them. He sets each of these characters up with some cool Zack Snyder set piece and none of them really worked for me. I will say Sophie uh, Butella as Cora is the best one. Honestly, if you had put a gun to my head and asked me what her name was and I just saw the movie, I wouldn't have remembered. So much of this movie is unmemorable, which is sad given the scale and budget and vision that he's putting out on, stre on screen. It's just a space Western. Um, and he uses the slow-mo way too much. Uh, there's one sequence in the beginning where you'll know what it is where Sophie sort of makes that decision to fight back. You've seen it in the trailers. That sequence was probably the best action sequence in the movie. Uh, and it's like a buildup that you're like, finally. And I didn't hate that part. It was very cliche. We've seen those moments before. But it was the only time where I was like, okay, let's see where this goes. And then she rides her weird space horse into town to rally the team. And with the worst actor I've I've ever seen. I, I don't, I, I can't, I, hold on. I'm trying to find the poster of this guy. Who is this guy? Michael Huseman as Gunner. Uh, there he is. Awful. <laughs> this guy's awful. I just, so generic soap actor, kind of looks like Zack Snyder. Like, he's like putting himself in the movie, and he's the most generic, annoying character uh, and bad act. I don't know if it's him or the script, but I just could not get in. But th these are the two who go on this journey and they stumble upon this robot deer. No, they don't. Honestly, I, this poster is, this isn't in the movie. This isn't in the movie. This is like the last Jedi where you're expect to see Mark Hamill. There's an allusion to it at the end. Uh, but for them to put this all over the marketing, which they've done is super bizarre. And uh, I will say the limited parts, we see the robot voiced by Anthony Hopkins, who I didn't realize was named Jimmy. I guess that'll happen in part two, but this is a poster for part one. Uh, Jimmy, I would say, is probably the other interesting character that I'd love to learn more of. Uh, but as they go into town, they run into Charlie uh, Hunnam as Kai, uh, and then they get Jaiman Hunsu as General Titus, and I, I would not have remembered all these names, Donna Bay as Nemesis, who of course has to have lightsabers in his original space drama. He couldn't resist. Uh, then we have the bad guy, Ed uh, Skirin as Noble, and he's like, um, he's like trying to be Darth Vader, but more like the guy, uh, Kirch, Kirch, what's his name? Kirtridge from Avatar. Uh, I forget the guy's name again, another movie where like, I don't know any of those characters names, Jake Sully, Naturi, Naturi, uh, name of the kids from Avatar part two. Uh, I dare you in the comments down below without cheating. Uh, anyway, he plays Noble, the bad guy. And then we have Staz Nair as shirtless hunk basically like the 300 guys he's there he this guy's looks like a matthew mcconaughey with just rippled abs and no backstory no idea who this guy is he's just there to look hot with his abs and to jump on a flying griffin type creature in a sequence that i didn't think was actually very well made he's trying to do like this avatar sequence and that's the problem but and then and with um sword lady we like go meet Sword Lady, and she's in the middle of trying to do something cool. She's got to defeat a Spider Woman, and everyone just sits back and watches as she defeats a Spider Woman, and then she's that she's just part of the team. It just show up, cool sequence. You're not part of the team. There's no like actual character development or reasons to care for any of these people, and then 
Ray Fisher shows up as Darian Bloodaxe. And honestly, the, the dreads and the makeup and everything else, I didn't even recognize him at first. But I'm going to say something. I'm going to be honest. He's probably the most interesting, best actor of the bunch. It's not a huge role. He shows up towards the end. But I, distract, I, I was not mad at him. Uh, it was an interesting choice. And he, he did step it up. There it is. I, I got to keep it honest. I don't like the man, uh, but uh, I can judge the performance. And yeah, it's okay. And then there's Duffy as E. Duffy as Milius. Very unmemorable character. She, anyway, I don't want to spoil, but anyway, that's the crew. So they're get ready to rally up these guys as they go on a space mission and take about two hours and 15 minutes in a movie that admittedly he's already said isn't his final version so netflix is like trying to double dip on the snyder fans and that should piss you off guys like why isn't netflix just letting him release the finished version of his movie oh because they got to maximize a snyder cut that's now what he's known for he's forever gonna edit an unfinished version and then give you a longer version honestly i don't i don't need to see the longer version i wasn't that in, engaged and sure the longer vision might give me a little bit more background and the lore and these characters but a filmmaker's job is to fit it in the time that a movie takes. And people have been doing it for decades. I don't know why Zack Snyder's unwilling and unable to trim his scripts down or do less slow-mo. There are sequences of slow-mo that were so annoying, that offered nothing. It's like, he does that, that and it's like, lasers are going by. Lasers are not interesting in slow-mo. <laughs> they just aren't. And if anything, it's like, you're. I'm, there were moments where I'm sitting there and I'm, not trying to be negative or cynic about it, but I'm just like, why is he doing this? It's not offering anything, but he thinks it looks cool. And if anything, it was bogging down the action. And there's choreography choreography in this movie, especially towards its finale, that makes no sense. Literally moments where people are all fighting in the middle of a battle where lasers are going all over and a character just gets to stop in a slow-mo moment to react and then run. And you're like, <laughs> what the hell's happening? It makes it's so badly done. He's he focuses on these visuals, but he doesn't actually really focus on the characters for us to care or the actual story itself. There's a couple plot points that I saw coming, etc. But whatever. Uh, overall, this movie has like again, he's trying to add all these visuals of weird aliens at moments, but they're all like this S and M club vibe, bro. Snyder vision that not, you know, there's a couple interesting moments, but overall I was just shocked by how bored I was at most for most of the movie. It just didn't ever feel fun. Like star. We, this is his star Wars. It never felt fun. It never felt original. I never felt invested in any of the characters and it just was blah. It was very blah. And it was a big moment. And I, and I wanted to like it. I actually did. I would love nothing more than a cool new original space epic that we get invested in but there's this is all stuff we've seen before but it's the snyder version of it all and i just i, I it's not like his worst movie i'll admit it I, I there he's made worse movies in my opinion but it's all just very unnecessary and it's so expensive but still somehow at times because of the acting and the script feels like a tv movie like there are moments that work that feel like okay when we're in a space epic and then there's other moments where the effects or the acting or the script bring it back down to earth and you're like, yikes, this is not very good. Uh, overall, I just, I don't see general audiences like getting jazz to like watch this, then watch the longer one, then watch the next part two, and then they watch the next longer one and then watch the full. It just, it's not that engrossing to be perfectly honest. And again, it says it right there. It's part one. So it just feels a little underwhelming. It's ending is so bizarre. Oh, and they do, they, it's a moment at the end where they, you're going to see it coming. I did at least, and it's so ripped off from another movie. <laughs> I literally laughed in the crowd. My, the, it was critics, but we're all just, oh, this rolled our eyes of just sort of like the cliche, obvious sci-fi things that Zack Snyder's borrowing from where I just wish he would have tried to do something of his own. That's what I thought this was. But no, it really is his Star Wars. It's Star Wars, but more so Seven Samurai, Magnificent Seven. And I, I yeah, the critics are not completely wrong. They really aren't on this one. Of course, Snyder bros will be all over this and oh, this visual. I, I, I couldn't get invested at all. Some of these actors are okay. I even admit Ray Fisher's not the worst of it. 
Uh, he's the seventh, not this, uh, this literally deer man never shows deer robot is not in this movie. Um, but overall, yeah, I got a, not, no interest, not good enough, sad, frustrating. It showed me that Zack Snyder is all style over substance, which we've known, but in this one that now that he's given all carte blanche to do what he wants and Netflix gave him this big payday, go do it, go make this big space, original space opera. He just, he doesn't have it. He needs a better screenwriter and he needs to hold back on some of these directing choices. In my, my point of view, it slows things down. It does. It's no longer cool. It's just unnecessary. And those moments where he's focused on the stylized cool takes away from getting more invested in these characters, which I think he would have done because honestly the actions mid, mid at most. And uh, yeah, overall I, I just, I'm not rooting for these rebels. I don't, I did not really care that much. And that's a sad thing given what the setup is, which was not bad. Uh, it's like, okay, we got to go get a revenge. Let's go get these people. And literally just randomly shows up, picks up people. <laughs> There's no way to get invested. And he made a massive mistake there. No longer cut can save that. Just because you make the movie longer doesn't make it better. And just because you stylize it doesn't mean it's not still a turd. You can't polish a turd. And honestly, at the end of the day, this is a very glossy, uh, slow-mo, Snyder-versioned turd. It is. It's not that big of a deal. It's not rocket. It's nothing new. And overall, I I'm disappointed. I wish he would have had this uh, taken this opportunity to take some more risks on a story and have someone help him write it better. Man, some of the dialogue is a, is atrocious. Yeah, this movie's this movie's a mess. Uh, there it is. But hey, you'll hate on me, all you Snyder fans. L can't wait to have you back in my feed. Block, 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 block. Don't care. Go away. Look, some of you are going to enjoy it. Have fun. It's going to be on Netflix. We got to see it in the theater. It definitely like plays visually. It's weird Netflix didn't give it a shot. They never do, though, to be fair. I don't think that's just a shot at Zach. But if this really was a Star Wars You'd put it in theaters to make it a big pop culture moment. But I, I sense Netflix knows like this is a gamble. This is a gamble. And it'll be interesting to see if this really does make money, a lot of views and a lot of attention like Snyder Cut or anything else. We'll we'll see. Curious what you guys think as you watch it. Uh, make sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already to Popcorn Planet and Movie World Plus here where we talk movies. And tomorrow I'm seeing Aquaman 2. I didn't want to go, but... I promised I wouldn't pay for it, but I am going to go uh, to see it just to get my uh, ducks in order to know how much is Amber in it, et cetera. We'll tell you. So stay tuned. That'll be, uh, I'm seeing that tomorrow night. You'll see that review here on Thursday. Thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for more on Movie World Plus.